This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hello, friends. My name is Denise Renner, and I want to welcome you to my program, Time with Denise Renner. I really value that you would spend your time with me. And the most important thing is that we can look and study the Word of God together because it's the Word of God that is going to keep us stable in these times. It's going to be exactly what the Word of God says it is. It is a light unto our path, and it gives us light when dark times come. The Word of God will show us what to do. And I'm so grateful you're with me, and I'm so grateful we can have this time together and study the Word of God together. And I want to invite you, if you need prayer, please let us know how we can pray for you because we have a whole team just waiting to pray with you and agree with you. And I'm telling you, friends, we're seeing miracles through that time of prayer with those who call in and our prayer team. And I want to also encourage you to Get my book, Unstoppable. Has anything ever tried to stop you in your race or your journey with God? Well, I can tell you right now that I've definitely been tempted to stop a number of times. And maybe this is what's touched you. Unforgiveness, fear, negative opinions of other people. Well, In this book that I've written, it was my heart's desire to be able to encourage you that no matter what happens, if it's negative opinions, if it's fear trying to stop you, if if it's whatever it is, if it's offenses, that you move past and be unstoppable. You know, it's really important that we take on that attitude because, oh, I've been with some people and I have some dear friends, and if they didn't have an unstoppable attitude, they would have quit and they would have died, actually, because sickness, sickness tries to come against you and stop you. But the one who's in you is greater than that sickness. Okay, I want you to have my book, Unstoppable. And today, we are talking about things that we should know. And one of the things that we should know is we should know the power of forgiveness. We should know the power of knowing who you are. And we should know also that there are opportunities that God is presenting before us, and we should know about it, and we should take advantage of it. And today, we're going to talk about Knowing the power of one day. I want you to stay with me because I'm going to be right back and we're going to open up the word of God and it's going to be a blessing to you. Friend, I'm so excited to open the word to you today. And we're talking about knowing the power of one day. And we're speaking, our our key verse is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And it says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The enemy is trying to steal your time, steal what God has for you. And it's time to redeem the time. And how do we do it? Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And it's important that today we search the scriptures about knowing the power of one day. So let's look first at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it says, Therefore, 
Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, friend, Jesus said that. Jesus was talking to the people who were listening to him. Jesus is talking to you and me right now about not worrying about tomorrow, but to take advantage of today. You know, it's amazing that Jesus said that because if anybody could have worried about tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next year or how he was going to be crucified or how he was going to be separated from his father, he knew it all. He could have worried. And if he had worried, he would have wasted minutes or hours of that precious day. You see, God wants us, you and me, to, it says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that he came, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy, but he came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Well, life consists of days. He wants this day, your day. I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody right now. He wants your day to be filled with his abundance, his presence, his joy, his peace. It's all there available for us. (laughs) And it's for us to reach out and take it by faith. But we have one day at a time. And if we start worrying about tomorrow the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year, it's going to steal from our precious today. You know, maybe you've talked to somebody before and and maybe they almost died and they took on an attitude of, I'm so grateful I'm alive today. I woke up this morning. Why did they have such a grateful attitude? Well, because they didn't know if they were going to have any more days in front of them. Those days today is precious. And Jesus was trying to tell us, don't worry your day away, but take the whole day and the abundance that he wants to give you in this one day could happen the rest of this day? What could happen? I mean, God can do anything. And it it says in Proverbs that um, as, as we think is how we are. So if we just think, oh, you're just too positive. Nothing's going to happen in my day. Well, probably nothing will happen in your day. But if we're looking up, we have expectant hope in our God that he has given us an abundant salvation and that all kinds of things and wonderful things could happen in our day. Friend, I'm telling you that it can happen. It depends on our attitude. And what am I talking about attitude? I'm talking about our faith. What do we believe that God could do in this day? He can do amazing things. Well, let's go on. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, also verse 11. And Jesus, again, talking about one day, not talking about a week, not talking about a month, one day. And it says in verse 9, and you know it, it's the Lord's Prayer. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this week. No. Give us this very day our daily bread. Jesus was talking about one day. Give us this day, today, our daily bread. It's so important, friend, that we adopt this kind of thinking and believe what Jesus said. I've been in a situation many years ago and, and I didn't know 
of, uh, uh, I mean, worries and worries and pressure and pressure coming, coming, real, to try to steal for one day and to grab a hold of this truth. So I was meditating and meditating every day on this scripture that I wouldn't waste one day. Okay, let's see what else the Word of God says. The Word of God says in the Exodus, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you now, this is a truth from God's Word. Here we are in Exodus. And when God provided the manna for them, he didn't provide it for a week. He only provided it for one day at a time. I want you to see it with me. It says Exodus chapter 16. It says, so when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moses said, let no one leave any of it till tomorrow in the morning. Notwithstanding, they did not listen to Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning and it bred worms and stank and Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. What were those other people trying to do by trying to save something from one day to the next day? They were worried. They were worried that God would not per, per give them what they needed for the next day. He wouldn't provide. God is a daily God. He gives you exactly today what you need. And he was showing that example with the children of Israel and the manna. He said, I'm going to give you what you need today. I'm not giving you what you need tomorrow. I'm giving you what you need today. And I want you to trust me that I'm going to take care of you today. So powerful. Look at Lamentations, Lamentations. It's verse three. Friend, God is a daily God. This is amazing. We need to learn this. Lamentations chapter three, and it's a verse 23. It says, no, verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. I just want to think about that right there. The compassions that the Lord has toward you right now, they do not fail. They're perfect. They're exactly what you need. His compassions to you, especially. I see someone right now and you're in such a place and you're like, you mean the compassions are coming towards me right now? Yes, they are. Right now to you. Now look at this next verse. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The compassions that God is bringing to you right now are not the compassions of yesterday. You needed different compassions yesterday, but today you need brand new compassions. That, and, and those compassions, they're not old compassions that he dusted off and tried to make new. No, these compassions that are coming towards you right now, they're brand new and they've never been before. And they're for today. Friend, I can see that there's a lot of pressure and a lot of worries and a lot of what ifs. But if we can silence the what ifs and say, God, I'm going to take your compassions for me right now, for this day. He's going to open up to you more of who he is. 
you're going to understand more about his presence that's there for you right now and that his will for you is to get you through this day no matter how difficult it is. I think I'm talking to a mother that you're so worried about your child and you just don't know what to do. And it is a real situation and it is a bad situation. And the words, what if, and I don't know if I can do it. What if that happens? And what if that happens? The pressure coming in on you. But if you can just receive his compassions right now, the peace of God is just going to come over your soul. Even your heart is going to stop palpitating too fast, too fast because of anxiety. But if you'll take his compassions right now, you're taking his peace. He is a today God. Oh, he's amazing. Completely amazing. Now I want you to turn with me to John 21. God can do so much in one day. And this is one of the last days that he had, that Jesus had after being risen from the dead with the disciples. And the disciples, I mean, you know, Jesus had appeared a couple of times and uh, he was speaking to them about peace. And, but honestly, they didn't know what to do with their life. They had dedicated their life to Jesus for three years. They had walked with him. They laughed with him. They slept with him. They worked with him. They served with him. They ate with him for three years. And now he was gone and like, now what are we going to do? And probably the Jews hate us. And what are we going to do with our lives? And so it says that Peter in John chapter 21, that he said, I don't know about you talking to the disciples, but I'm going fishing. And so all of them go fishing together. And the Bible says that they fished all night and that they didn't catch anything. But the next day was morning. And they heard a voice from the shore. And the voice said, children, cast your nets on the other side. And so Peter's thinking, John's thinking, I think that's Jesus. And they cast their nets on the other side. And Peter gets out of the boat. He's, he's swimming or, or, or wading up to the shore. And there's Jesus on this new day. He's already making breakfast for them. They had a big catch of fish. The Bible says 153 and then Jesus began to talk to Peter and ask him some major questions, same question three times. And friend, we don't know what was going on in the heart of Peter. Um, we know that Jesus prayed for Peter and he said, Satan wants to, to sift you like wheat. He just wants to destroy you. But I have prayed for you, Peter, and you're going to be okay. Well, Here's Peter after Jesus is risen from the dead and Jesus asking those three questions. Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Then not even a pause. Jesus says it again. Peter, do you love me? Oh, Lord, yes, of course, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Third time, the Bible says that Peter was getting discouraged because it was the third time that he asked him. And Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. You know, when that day started, those disciples, they had no provision. We don't know what's going on in Peter's head because he had failed the Lord. He had denied, he had denied the Lord. 
he saw the Lord crucified. He saw the blood. They all saw it. And what's going to happen with us? And now here's Jesus asking three questions. And friend, again, I don't know what was going in the heart of Peter, but I believe in those three questions, Jesus was saying to Peter, Peter, yes, you did, you did deny me three times, but Peter, it's time to get up and go. I've got more for you to do than to think about how you've, you messed up. And, and you, you get up and you get ready because we've got lots to do. And then he even tells Peter how he's going to die. What happened in one day? One day. Do you think those disciples went fishing, didn't catch anything all night, woke up the next morning thinking, oh, Jesus is going to be on the shore. He's going to have breakfast for us. He's going to ask me three times why, <clears throat> if I love him, <clears throat> and to feed my sheep. No, Peter doesn't know any of that. He doesn't know there's going to be breakfast. None of them do. They don't know that they're going to catch 153 fish, and none of them know it. And friend, when I was meditating on this scripture many years ago, the Lord said to me, Denise, do not underestimate one day because you don't know what I have for you in that day. The disciples, they didn't know that Jesus had all of that for them. They didn't know that. They didn't know they were going to have amazing breakfast with Jesus and he was going to prepare it for them. They didn't know they were going to go from not having provision to having provision. Peter didn't know that Jesus was going to be restoring his soul by his very word spoken to him and tell him how he was going to die. They didn't know a thing. And I'm saying that to you. The power of your day today, you don't know what God has planned for you, but the Bible says that his plans for you are for good, they're for a peace, and they're for a future, not for your calamity. And I want you to stay with me because I'm going to be right back and I want to pray for you. And we want to open our hearts more to understand that one day can be a life-changing day for us. When you know the will of God, you can redeem the time. Even if you have strayed from the plan God has for your life, you still have the opportunity to get back onto the path the Lord has for you. In her insightful series, Walking in God's Will and Redeeming the Time, Denise Renner shares how to be wise in understanding the call of God on your life and how to get back on track if you have lost your footing. Denise will explain the importance of knowing who you really are, knowing the power of forgiveness, knowing and taking advantage of your opportunities, knowing the power of one day, knowing the power of being thankful. This impactful five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. In addition to this teaching series, we are also offering you the book Unstoppable by Denise Renner. In this powerful book, Denise brings fresh insight from God's Word on how to overcome key hindrances that the enemy exploits to clog up our supply. Whether it's the fear of man, rejection, unforgiveness, other people's negative opinions, or even your own poor opinion of yourself trying to hold you down, you don't have to take it. Learn how to push past every obstacle and become unstoppable for God with this book. You can purchase Unstoppable for $20. Don't miss this special offer. Order the bundle of the series, Walking in God's Will and Redeeming the Time, and the book Unstoppable by Denise Renner. Call the number on your screen now, or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. You know, friend, it's really uh, unfortunate that sometimes that we hear just a simple word and we think, oh, I already know that, oh, I already know that, but then in our daily living, in our practice, 
we're not taking a hold of what we just heard. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to see the power of your day. Our, our minds need to be renewed to the power of 24 hours of what God could do in 24 hours. When I said to you that his plans for you are not for evil, not for calamity, but for a future and a hope and for peace, that's in the Bible. And so God has something planned for you today. Good. His compassions, brand new. Every single morning when you wake up, every single morning when you wake up, there is provision for you of compassions. It's so important that we know how to redeem the time by knowing the power of one day and not taking it for granted. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, well, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to kill some time. Kill some time. Your time is precious. And it is ticking. It is going by. But you've got that day. Oh, I've enjoyed bringing the word of God to you today. And also, I just want to encourage you again. If you need prayer, please let us know how we can pray for you. And now I want to pray for you. Father, I just thank you for this time that we've had together. Lord, to think about one day and what you can do in just 24 hours, how you can change our life in 24 hours. And Father, by faith with my friends, we reach out right now and we take your compassions that are brand new for us today. We thank you for your will for us, not for calamity, but for a future and a hope and for peace. We receive it, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, our Lord. We pray in his name. Amen. Well, I've enjoyed being with you so much today, and I want to see you next time on our next program. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.